the Marine Raphale scores over American Super Hornet in Navy deal. According to reports in the Times of India, the Navy has now given the Defense Ministry a detailed report on these two fighters, which were tested earlier this year, so that a final decision can be made about what will eventually be a government-to-government -government deal. And as per the report, the French Rafale M is more suitable for the Navy in meeting the operational requirements and criteria than the Super Hornets. At the shore-based test facility at INS Hansa in Goa, which has a ski jump that looks like an aircraft carrier's deck, operational demonstration trials were done on both fighters to test their suitability and capability. The IAF has already received 36 Rafales under the 59,000 crore rupees deal signed with France in September 2016. And the aircraft has deployed it in Bala and Hasamara. The IAF only has 30 to 31 fighter squadrons, and more such jets are needed to counter the threat posed by China and Pakistan. The IAF's long-term plan is to get more 4.5-generation fighters with some fifth-generation capabilities. And Rafales will be a big part of that plan. There could be between 57 and 114 fighters, and most of them will be made in India. Earlier, when defense experts first compared Super Hornets to Dassault Rafales, they said that the Rafale M couldn't fold its wings, and it would take up more space on the deck of an aircraft carrier. The F-18 Super Hornet, on the other hand, has wings that can be folded. Boeing showed the Indian Navy that the warplane could fit in the lift of the INS Vikrant and INS Vikramaditya without having to take off the radome cone and wingtip rails. The F-18 Super Hornet's biggest benefit is that it can do the same job for a lot less money. With Meteor, Raphael is more powerful in air combat, a F-3R standard Raphael M brings the very long-range Meteor missile to the BVR arena. With AIM-120D, it easily beats F-A-18E, even when launched at the same speed and altitude. Raphael can also supercruise comfortably at around 30,000 feet, and it can go higher without problems. While, the Super Hornet, on the other hand, can't supercruise and is more comfortable at low altitudes, which means its missiles start with much less energy at launch. But it is a better platform that can do more things. It would be a different game with AIM-260, as Super Hornet would be able to fully utilize its superior radar. Also, both the single-seater and twin-seater versions of the Super Hornet can take off from the deck of an aircraft carrier while the Rafale twin-seater M's version can only take off from the shore. Boeing thought this would be an advantage for the Super Hornets. Boeing also emphasized interoperability, claiming that the Super Hornet is compatible with other Indian Navy systems and platforms, such as the MH-60 Romeo and P-8I Poseidon maritime aircraft. But if a Rafale M and a Super Hornet were close enough to see each other, the Rafale M would almost always have a significant advantage over the Super Hornet. The Super Hornet has low energy retention and acceleration, and its performance suffers significantly when subjected to external loads and at altitudes above 25,000 feet. The Rafale M performs best at altitudes less than 35,000 feet. And it can turn faster than the Super Hornet at all altitudes and with all comparable loads. Since the country's first aircraft carrier, the 45,000-ton INS Vikrant, was put into service on September 2, the Navy has been pushing its case, especially for the 26 fighters that can fly from an aircraft carrier. The chief of the Indian Navy stated last week that the 26 fighters were interim solution until the indigenous, twin-engine deck-based fighter being developed by the DRDO was ready. It will take at least a decade for the twin-engine deck-based fighter to become fully operational. As of now, the Navy has 40 of the 45 MiG-29Ks, purchased from Russia for $2 billion in 2010, to operate from the deck of the 44,500-ton aircraft carrier INS Vikramaditya, which cost an additional $2.3 billion. For many years, the operational serviceability of MiG-29K fighters has been a major issue. As previously reported, INS Vikrant will be fully combat-ready after the MiG-29Ks complete its critical flight trials from its sprawling deck, and after it is equipped with all of its high-tech weapons, including the Israeli-origin 80km range Barak-8 surface-to-air missile systems by around mid-2023.